This is going to be our second lecture of, and final lecture of Module 7. In this lecture, we're going to be going over commercial service calculations as they apply to Article 220. So our objectives for this lesson, we're going to use Table 220.12 to determine general lighting load. You notice this is the same as it was for our dwelling calculation. Use Table 220.42 to apply lighting demand factors. Determine loads required by 220.14A through L. Use Table 220.56 to determine cooking equipment loads. And calculate total load required to serve commercial occupancies. So as you'll notice by our first two objectives here, several of the steps that we're going to take to do a commercial calculation are going to be the same as we did with a dwelling calculation. Just we have a couple of steps that are going to be slightly different uh, or that are going to be referencing different tables, such as the table 220.56 for cooking equipment. For definitions, once again, we have non-coincident. This is going to be another one of our steps for the commercial calculation, same as it was for the dwelling calculation. And an outlet, a point on the wiring system at which current is taken to supply utilization equipment. Um, so it's important to note, uh, sometimes the vernacular gets thrown around a little bit. We sometimes think of an outlet as a receptacle when in reality it's any point on the electrical system where we're making a, a connection to bring power to something such as a junction box where we might come off to a light fixture at as will be the example we reference later in the lecture. So once again we're going to be in article 220 branch circuit feeder and service calculations. Article 220 is always where we're going to be going whenever we're trying to calculate any type of service size. Um, it's easy to get Article 220 and 230 confused because 230 being services. We have to keep in mind that 230 has general service requirements such as, you know, your vertical clearance heights, uh, the number of service disconnect means, things like that, whereas 220 is about calculations, in other words, sizing. So commercial calculations can be broken down into eight steps as opposed to nine steps for our uh, dwelling calculations. Step one is going to be the same as the dwelling calculation, table 220.12 for our general lighting load. Then we're actually going to be skipping, quote unquote, skipping a step that we would normally do for a dwelling calculation and go straight to our lighting demand factors. Then we're going to be comparing our AC versus our heat again. We have a little bit of a newish step in the idea of the service calculation realm with 220.14 A through L for other loads. We have 220.44, which is our demand for outlets. 220.56, cooking equipment loads. 220.50 for our motor load increase. And finally, step eight, calculate total load. So as you can see, Really, almost all the steps are going to be the same with the exceptions of step four and five are going to be uh, new. And the way that we approach some of these steps are going to be a little bit different, as you'll see with step six for cooking equipment. It's much, much easier to size the load needed for cooking equipment for a commercial uh, occupancy than it is a dwelling occupancy. So we have an example warehouse that we're going to use. This is the same kind of format as we did for the dwelling. We have a 10,000 square feet warehouse. In this warehouse, there's gonna be a total of 20 kW of heating load and 10 kW of AC load. I've just given you the load amounts in kW to simplify things. Uh, and we have the following miscellaneous loads in the building. We have 4,000 watts of task lighting, 12,000 watts of receptacle loads. We have two 10 kW cooking units. And that's all we're going to be ha we're going to have in this warehouse. So once again, if you want to write this down, take a screen capture uh, of this before we get rolling. Give everybody a second for that. And we're going to roll on to step number one now. Step one, our general lighting load. Once again, we're just going to be going to table 220.12. We're going to take the square foot of our building and times it by our volt amp amount. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that this is specific to the type of occupancy that you're in. So this time, since we're doing, we were specified a warehouse for a type of occupancy, if we go down that column to warehouse for storage uh, and go straight across to our right, we see that we have one 
fourth of a volt amp per square foot, which is going to be much less for, than our dwelling unit was. So for step number one, we do 10,000 times 0.25, and we come out to 2,500 volt amps. Step number two for our lighting load, lighting demand factors, once again, Table 220.42 allows us to apply a demand factor to the value we calculate in step one. For a warehouse, our first 12,500 volt amps is at 100%, and the remainder is gonna be at 50%. Now you may notice we have a very small number for our warehouse. And typically, a, a normal size warehouse will be somewhere between three quarter of a million to a million square foot feet would be a pretty good sized warehouse. I wanted to keep them, just use a small 10,000 square foot warehouse, uh, which in reality wouldn't really exist. You would never have a warehouse that small, um, what the code defines as a warehouse anyway. Um, but I just wanted to keep the number small for everyone so that it makes it a little bit easier to get the ideas instead of trying to have to calculate the math. Um, and here we see our table 220.42, once again, as stated on the last slide, we go down to warehouses, first 12,500 or less at 100%, everything else at 50%. So for our step number two, we're still gonna be at 2,500 volt amps because our step number one was equal to or less than 12,500 volt amps. And once again, important to note, you'll see that step number one is grayed out. That's because Assuming it had been a different number, we would no longer care about the number in step number one. Uh, we would be proceeding with the step number two value. Step number three, our AC versus our heat. Once again, uh, 220.60 allows non-coincident loads. We only need to carry the load for the larger of the two. In our case, we already knew since they were both given to us in a KW rating, that this is gonna be 20,000 volt amps. Um, now you may notice at this point a couple different things. Uh, you may notice that we're proceeding through this calculation a lot quicker than we were the dwelling calculation. Uh, a big part of this is because I always like to go over dwelling calculations first because they're a little bit more relatable and you learn almost all of these steps from the dwelling calculation. The other factor is that typically with a warehouse, uh, there's less figuring to be done. Everything will typically be handed to you and given to you in plain language. You won't have to go out and look at AC units or heat units in order to calculate that. That's because in a commercial or an industrial setting uh, with a warehouse like that, the mechanical contractor would provide the information on that uh, and save you a lot of work. Uh, in my mind, uh, a commercial calculation is really just t keeping track of what all loads you have in the building. You don't really have to calculate many loads. Step number four, this is going to be a unique step to commercial calculations. We have other loads. So for each item that we have listed in 220.14 A through L, we need to include the amount of load that it specifies for that item. Uh, so a couple examples of some of these items. We won't go through all of them because some of them are very specific. We need to include the volt ampere of each luminaire uh, in the building. And it's important to note that for the sake of this 220.14A through L, we're only talking about luminaires that are going to be used for task lighting or things like that. You have to keep in mind the general building lighting uh, the normal lighting is going to be included in our step one general lighting load. So any luminaires that we have listed here are just going to be task lighting or dedicated for a specific purpose. They're not going to be for general building illumination. 600 volt amp for each heavy duty lamp holder we have in the building. 1200 volt amp minimum for each sign outlet. 200 volt amps per foot of show window and 180 volt amps for single or multiple receptacles on the same yoke, or 90 volt amp per receptacle for four or more on one yoke. So like I said, these are just a few examples of some of the things of 220.14A through L. 
Um, it's mainly important to keep in mind if you get a odd question, you know, such as what we have listed here, what would be the volt amp requirement for 10 heavy duty lamp holders in a commercial warehouse? Uh, 220.14A through L is where you would go for those specific item loads. So we already had those load amounts given to us in our example situation. So we're just going to be adding all those A through Ls up and we get 16,000 volt amps. Next, we have a receptacle demand factor though. 220.44 allows, allows demand factors to be applied to specifically receptacle loads. So the first 10 kVA of our uh, receptacle loads are gonna be at 100% and everything after that is going to be at 100%. We see 220.44 here, demand factors for non-dwelling receptacle loads and just as I said, first 10 kVA or less at 100%, everything else at 50%. So of that step number four, we would need to separate out those receptacle loads and apply those demand factors to them. Then we can add them back to our other loads, such as our luminators, things like that. And for step number five, that knocked us down to 15,000 volt amps. Now it's important to note, once again, step number four is now grayed out. That's because step number five, the same way step number two replaced, replaced step number one, step number five is going to replace step number four. We're no longer going to be using or caring about that value uh, that was used in step number four. Step number six for cooking equipment. Table 220.56 lists the man ratings for cooking equipment. Uh, as I said, it's much, much easier to size cooking equipment for a commercial occupancy than it is a dwelling unit. Um, instead of having to use 5% rules and knowing which specific column to use, all we're gonna do is go to this uh, table 220.56, look at our how many pieces of equipment we have, and then apply whatever demand factor the table gives us to the total uh, KVA of the units. So in our situation, if I recall, we had two 10 KVA or 10, 10 KW units, two times 10 KW units, sorry about that. So we would go to two for our number of equipment, go straight across and we see a 100% demand factor, meaning we can't reduce that load at all. So for step number six, we have two 10 kW units, meaning we have a total load of 20,000 volt amps. Step number seven for the commercial calculation is gonna be the same as step number eight for the dwelling. 220.50 requires motor loads meet 430.24, 25, 26, as well as 22. Uh, and once again, for service for circuit services supplying motors, the large motor must be increased by 25%, assuming we already had the 100% in the calculation. And once again, it's important to keep in mind that if the largest motor was an AC or heat unit and it was not used in step three, uh, we're not gonna be counting it in this calculation. So for our step number seven, we actually didn't have a motor listed uh, for this specific example warehouse, so we won't be including any additional load in our step seven. Uh, that's another fairly unique thing about a commercial calculation is that you may have noticed back when we were looking at our 220.14A through L, we didn't have a lot of those loads such as the uh, signage or the show windows. Uh, when you're doing a commercial calculation, it's entirely possible to not have anything for some of these steps. For example, back in our step three, a lot of warehouses don't have AC in them, so they will only have heat. So there's no need to compare the heat versus the AC. Um, you may have a warehouse that doesn't have any receptacles in it. Receptacles aren't required by code in warehouses, uh, meaning that you wouldn't have that in step four and you wouldn't have anything to apply demand factors to in step five. So if you don't have something, if you go to do a commercial calculation and you don't have something for every single step, 
you know, don't let that uh, bug you and think that you've done something wrong. It's entirely possible that you don't, as you can see here with our step number seven. Finally, for our total load, we're going to add the VA calculated in steps two, three, five, six, and seven together for our total VA. So in our situation, we have 57,500 volt amps. Once again, we're going to be going, we're going to be dividing our line voltage, our line VA by our line voltage, and then go to table 240.6A to determine our overcurrent protective size. So in our situation, we have a three phase 480 volt service, which is typical for warehouses, especially one this small. Our 57,500 volt amps divided by 480 divided by 1.732, since it's three phase, equals 69.163 amps, uh, meaning we can go up to a 70 amp overcurrent protective device. Once again, we're going to be going to 310.15B16 to size our conductors. Uh, keep in mind, this, even though this is less than 100 amps, it's still a service, so we can still use our 75 degrees Celsius column. Um, another note here is we don't have our 310.17 uh, rule applying here for the 83%. That's only for dwelling uh, occupancies. So we have to rate these conductors at the 100% size of the service. And in our situation, that comes out to a number four copper conductor. So for this particular warehouse, we could get away with using a 70 amp service with a number four copper uh, current carrying conductors on that. And that's going to conclude uh, this lecture. Uh, and it's actually going to be the last recorded lecture uh, for the uh, semester. Next session, we have a couple uh, PowerPoints and some videos uh, from other sources for Module 8, which is going to be our licensing examination.